this word from the Lord will change your life forever. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, he must be praised. Yes, he ought to be praised. We exalt in his name this hour. I pray as you trust in the God of your, of your salvation, every negative in your life will be moved, will be changed. The grace of God will abound unto you so much, giving you the strength, the know-how, the ability, the power that it takes for you to walk in total victory. Welcome again to the program. It's a glorious, wonderful opportunity to have you here. I am Minister Nelson. In the book of Romans chapter 5, it shows us how law came in and the reason why it was entered. Now, this needs to be clear for many of us. More so people who are struggling with different challenges, whether it want to be weight or sin. It must be clear where many of the challenges in Christendom comes from. When a man gives his or her life to God, they commit themselves to him. And then they were born again by the supplanting of the old nature, now to the nature and the life of the resurrected Christ slash God. That alone is sufficient for victory for every single individual in the universe. However, if a man mix law with grace and consciously Regardless of how passionate he is about the law, he will still struggle in life unnecessarily. Now we must know where Jesus Christ started and we must understand where law ended. In order for a man who say name the name of Jesus to walk in victory. I'm here to encourage you today to show you clearly that you are so set up by God to walk in victory. In every era of your life. Yes, let me say it again to you in the next way. God so elevated us in Christ Jesus and put us in a place of authority and triumph in Him. That means we should never be defeated in the midst of any and every given circumstances. I'm here to encourage you why you may not see that level of victory as yet, as many of us, however. We must be confident and we must be sure that God's part is clear and he had already finished his part. Then is you and I need to learn this truth. Look to God who is the author and the finisher of our faith in the person of Jesus Christ and walk in that victory because our God is faithful. There is no challenges or temptation that cometh unto man. Listen to me carefully now. That God... God doesn't already make a way of escape out for you and I. This is the mindset that I want you to have when you're thinking about God. Don't see your life with a dead end. Don't see your life with no way out. Don't see your life like you cannot make it. You must bear in mind that God would have already gone to the end of your journey and see all the negatives and I'll already give you and make prepare for you all the graces that are necessary for you to walk in victory. Beloved, you must bear in mind that your father is a loving God and he knows what is needed for you and thy life. Therefore, he already put everything in place for our victory. This mindset alone, listen, is a mindset that will land you three quarter of the journey or of the walk of faith already. This mindset already assure you a victory. Now, if this mindset is not there, it takes away from who God is and it reduces God to be a cruel, wicked, and insensitive dad. So we have to bear in mind that if we have a child, we would have already buy the necessary things that that child need for the first six months, three months, two months, one month, etc., before that child ever get here and ever born. Now, this is key to understand. Why would we think like that? Because we get it from our Father. When it comes to God, 
we must bear in mind that God already make preparation for your arrival. Oh, this is beautiful. This is wonderful, beloved. If I can get this mind in you, in order for you to see how much you are loved, how much God went before you get here and prepare for you, it will take away all your worry, all your stress, all your unnecessary sleepless night, and you would focus on the love of God instead, instead, and focusing on your problem. I love the book of Romans chapter 5. Verse 20, make it abundantly clear that something here need to take into serious consideration. Bear in mind what the Apostle Paul right here, beloved. Very, very amazing. He said, moreover, the law entered that the offense, which is sin, might abound. This is just out of this world. Now, many people don't understand why law come into place, what God was trying to accomplish. Therefore, even today, men are trying to please, to serve, and do the law, fail to recognize that over and over, the Apostle Paul and others will tell you that if you understand what love is, then you would know that when you learn the love of God, and you learn what it is to love your neighbor, then you would see that all the law sum up in this one commandment. Why? Because if you love your neighbor, you will not covet him. If you love your neighbor, you will not covet his wife. If you love your neighbor, you will not want to murder him. If you love your neighbor, you will not carry false news or be a false witness. So all that which we try to look into and try to make it so be so technical is because we are trying to circumvent a way around the word of God that he given to us. And we believe that God did not know what we had before and what Christ come to give us. So it's like we are taking God as a blind person. Therefore, things are just written there and God doesn't know why he put them there. Things are in sequence. Things are in the right pattern, in the right place. So law was given the perfect time in order for man to see, the, see their fall, in order for man to see their weaknesses, in order for man to be exposed, in order for man to recognize that they cannot make it with their best effort. Now it brings into light the fact that because of one man's sin, yes, every man fall. Every man fall because of one man's sin into that devastated place of condemnation for life. So he said the law entered, or John Lang Silas in the original of Greek, that's what he said here. But he said where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. This is just out of this world. So he said, law came in in order for sin, the offense, to seem deadly, to seem dangerous. The offense must run its course. That's what it is saying. The offense must be obvious to every man. No man must believe that is our, our good work, our good effort could have provided or could have produced righteousness as God wants righteousness to be. Never. Every man must clearly realize that they need God. They need help. Otherwise, they cannot make it. And this is where many people struggle unnecessarily. God knows you need help, beloved. God knows you cannot make it. God knows that is the reason why he wanted to trust his grace. Not because he get weak. Not because he changed. But because it was always his plan. So law must run its course. Any church law does run its, its course in that church will be suffering unnecessarily. Why? Because they will be living trying to please or serve law, not knowing why it was there. So it is important to bear in mind and let the law have its place to bring you and I to the end of ourselves in order that you and I can look to Jesus Christ as our only hope, as our only help, as our only righteousness, as our only sanctification, as our only provision, a provider, provision, everything together. We must see him as our all in all. However, if law doesn't have its course, run its course, have its way in our life and in our understanding to bring us to our knees, we will never see Jesus for who he is. We would want never see Jesus for who he is. Law is to destroy, is to kill, is to rip a man apart. 
with condemnation, with guilt, bring him to the end of himself, show him a big failure that he is, until that man cried out for Jesus, cried out for help, cried out for mercy, cried out for grace, cried out for God, love and God, love alone. Because that man must recognize that it's the only, listen, it's the only, it's only the goodness of God can lead him and can help him. When a man reaches at that place, then he's just ready to receive the Christ who God provided as a savior. So this one passage here is bringing the world to their knee. But it says something. It says, we are law. We are sin abound. Because the law caused sin to abound. Because the law said thou shalt not. Anytime you see that something inside of you rise up. And you try to put your best effort to do. And then you fail and then you die. You fail and you die. You fail and you die. Wow. And God said, here am I, call out for me, beg for my help. I'm your helper. I bring grace unto you. I have mercy over this side. And that man need to look and call out, Daddy, I need your help. That is when grace becomes important and relevant to that man. If a man receives grace, so to speak, without he understands the law, he can never walk in victory. Because he would believe that it's because God is weak. And he would try to do some weird things even though he received righteousness. He will still live a loose life. So many of what we have seen out there, there are people who have never taught law. So they have never died. They've never been killed by the law first. They never reached the place of zero, nothingness, emptiness, brokenness, failure, defeat, on their knees and crying. And see the outstretched hand of grace willing to lift them. So they would no longer trust in their own strength. And believe that they can do it on their own. That is one side. The next side is they will realize that is not weak, God weak. And grace is not an entrance or access for them to feel like they can sin while they're praising God and so that they are in righteousness. You see, those wrong mindset come because people don't understand the mind of God and what God was aiming to accomplish. So any church where a man come in, believe in the grace of God. He must understand that before this came, there was some, there was something named law. There was a next system in place to bring men to their knees. Therefore, the system must be skillfully presented to that man. And when that man realized that he could never do it, he died. Then that man just ready now for Jesus Christ. If the man is not dead, he has not yet, listen, he's not yet ready for grace. And that man will say he have grace and receive Jesus Christ and is the righteousness of God in Christ. But just playing games and try to look entrance to commit some little sins same way around the corner. Why? Because he cannot know love except he is killed by law in order to introduce to the presentation of God. So each day you would realize that grace is because of the love of God. It's not because of God gone soft or God is weak. Now these are the problems that we struggle with sometimes in the churches. And people don't know why a man would foolish enough to believe that he can be a trickster even though he says under grace that he can still doing some weird stuff and decide and believe it's okay this are the problem because that man was never listen he never yet been killed by law therefore he's trying to walk in grace which is good but grace cannot be effective in the life of a man except that man is dead that man have to experience death and that is why the cross is misunderstood so many times. Because the cross symbolizes the death of that old man, that failure, that wretched man, that man who cannot present himself to God in spite of how good he claimed that he is, his best effort is still falling short. Oh God Almighty. Then he would lift up his hands and recognize the love of God who comes searching for him in order to elevate him. In his wonderful grace and kindness. Did you remember in the book of John when Jesus Christ healed the blind man? They asked him, oh, Master, who oh, sin? He said, Hey, everything is not based upon a personal sin, but he said this was for the glory of God to be seen, to be manifested, and to be clear. Now, this is what the book of the Bible is saying right here in Romans chapter 5. You know, he said, We are sin abound, are the offense abound? He said, grace much more abound. That is outrageous, right? 
It's amazing. It's radical. I know. It's radical. Therefore, the most wretched of a sinner, it is saying here, that man must first presented the law. Then when he did, now he given grace because that man is not too far gone. But if that man is not given grace after law, he mess up himself, believe he can do something. And if that man just giving grace without law, you see now, he have this that problem. The next flip to this is that if that man only giving law without grace, then he's still in problem because he's working his one salvation and his one uh, getting saved. He's working his one way trying to get saved without understanding that it's impossible because there was a system there before that called law that could not bring man unto God because God is perfectly holy, perfectly righteous and man was soul and the sin. The book of Romans chapter 3, 23 tell us all have sin. So the Bible said as Jesus tell them in the book of John there that it's not about a personal sin but this man is suffering from something that he received from his parents. Yes, this man was blind, born blind. He's suffering from a sin that Adam committed down the road down there. So listen what happened now. He said, don't worry yourself. This is just a limited thing. It was so, or it is so. However, there is a fixer. Wherever that thing happened, the glory of God is here to shine. And this was what Paul was saying right here. So wherever there is a working of sin, a working of the offense. A man must understand it as a it is an opportunity. It is an open door. It is a glorious opportunity to present itself for the grace of God to work, to mend, to fix, to bring to light everything that would have been stuck in the dark domain. We must understand that we cannot run away from darkness and turn our head away or run away from people and believe that they are too gone, too far gone. No, we must see it as an opportunity. But, but if we have not taught, if we do not know the power of the grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we will say otherwise and we run away and we have seen it over and over. Romans chapter 1 tells us, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Therefore, we must see this gospel as the power of God in order for it to have its glorious work in the life of countless millions in the world. And that is what many people are struggling with now. They don't know the power of the gospel. Therefore, they cannot really effect the change in the lives of many individuals. I am here to encourage you. Look on the gospel learn the message of the gospel learn the mind of god find out what god was always up to and about see the amount of power that's in that it that's it, that that is in the gospel because of what jesus christ would have accomplished and what he did for you and i and for humanity generally and then approach life with that mindset and see every sinner as an opportunity to become a christian and become a person to serve god because now you would have seen that sinner that wherever sin may abound is just an opportunity because grace super abound that's what it is in the greek grace super abound but that man doesn't know and the christian may be looking and don't know and he see that man as a hopeless case therefore he doesn't understand the finished work of jesus christ be encouraged whoever you are wherever you are because where sin abound grace super abound i'm speaking to your life now let us get it down to your life as we close here we are seeing abound our negative abound in your life whatever circumstances whether it's sickness you have some lack children run away think negative in your marriage note carefully that grace super abound don't believe that there is a case that god leave just like that and turn a blind eye and no he put the necessary things in place for you and I to walk in victory. We may not know. We may, we may not understand. But remember how we start this teaching. You must have in mind. That as you provide for your children. And put things in place for them. Before they are even born. At least God is better than you and I. Therefore the least he could have done. Is put things in place. We may not know it. We may not understand it. We may not know how to release it. However it doesn't mean that it is not there. So be upbeat. Yes, be upbeat. You're not at a dead end. Be encouraged. All hope is not gone. 
you are children or child of a living God and he love you that much. God bless you abundantly. Thank you so much for joining us here. I pray you check out the description. Yes, and check out our online business opportunity because it's a glorious opportunity. God bless you abundantly. Thank you so much. I pray you walk in victory every step of the way in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah.